So I apologize for my last review not being an actual review. Let's make up for it with the game that gave me the Bondathon idea, Quantum of Solace. Now, Quantum of Solace the movie was hated by many, and I don't want to give my opinion on it, but it wasn't as bad as people say. But for the game, it was met with okay praise. Well, it was better reception than the movie. Quantum of Solace was released on November 4th, 2008 on the PlayStation 3, PlayStation 2, Xbox 360, Wii, DS, and PC. I'll be looking at the Xbox 360 version. Now, this game was developed by Treyarch, which was the same people who made the awesome Spider-Man games, and of course, some of the Call of Duty games. So it's no wonder why this game feels so much like COD 4. In fact, they use the same engine. Treyarch did try to make this game stand out from the crowd, and I can applaud them for that. I do think this game is better than Call of Duty in a lot of ways, but it still feels as generic as it gets. The story is exactly the same as the movies, so if you liked it, then great! If you didn't, skip the cutscenes. Most of the characters from the movie reprise their roles, like Daniel Craig voices Bond and Judi Dench returns the voice M. I personally think they should have done some kind of epilogue to the movie story, but whatever. Oh yeah, there are a few levels from Casino Royale. I guess they had some leftovers from the cancelled Casino Royale game. Quantum of Solace's gameplay is like any first-person shooter. You run, you aim, you crouch, you punch, and of course, you shoot. Since the engine is exactly the same as COD 4, it functions good enough. The campaign is epic, as it takes you through many locations like mansions and on top of trains. This is definitely a fun game to play through, but they did take out vehicle sections. Odd. Now Treyarch has made some additions that try to separate it from other shooters. You can do some awesome takedowns that weren't in any COD game. The biggest difference, however, is the cover system. By pressing A near a certain wall, you can snap into cover and go into a third person perspective. You can still aim and blind fire and stuff like that, so it's very flexible. I love the cover mechanic in this game. I wish more FPS's did this, because usually when they do have cover, you're still in a first person view and you can't see any enemies around you. Too bad the system never returns in any other Bond game. Now, you'll run into some cell sections throughout the game that aren't executed very well. Now, you got a radar that will tell you where all the enemies are, so that's lame. Second is you got some security cameras that you need to be super stealthy to get past. I'm just kidding, they're incredibly easy to avoid. But finally, there's lots of guards that will kill you if you make one wrong move and... Okay, I'm not fooling anyone. The stealth sections aren't hard or broken, they're too damn easy. I breezed through these sections easily on hard. HARD! I'm sorry, it's just I was expecting a challenge. They're easy because the guard patterns are predictable and the path they set for you is incredibly linear, making them nearly impossible to fail. Other than that, there's not much else to the gameplay that's unique enough to explain. Um, there's cell phones for collectibles. And eh, moving on. The graphics actually look really nice, I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, there's much better looking games out there, but for an early Xbox 360 title, they're pretty good. I like the production qualities that went into this game. You don't see that too often with movie tie-in games. The soundtrack is the same as the movies, which is typical action movie stuff. Entirely forgettable. The game does have a few glaring issues though. One is that the game on its hardest setting is still pretty easy, and you'll find that constant throughout each Bond game. Why is it so hard to make the game, oh, I don't know, HARD? Two is that a lot of the time, this game just feels too generic and barely ever feeling like a true Bond game. You could have taken away the Bond license and it would have been just another FPS on the flooded market. And three is that the multiplayer sucks. Wanna know why? Nobody plays it. <sighs> So, Quantum of Solace, is it worth your time and money? You can find Quantum of Solace for an insanely low price. I got my copy for, no joke, three dollars. Perfect condition and everything. 
You can't play multiplayer, but the single player is worth much more than three bucks, even if it is a little generic. Quantum of Solace gets a six out of ten. Seriously, three bucks. So after a pretty mediocre title, let's see if we can do better with 007 Bloodstone. See you then, Genesis Frenzy signing off. I think we should go somewhere a little more quiet.